Today, inshallah, in the, in the brief khatra, I want to go through an ayah that we often hear every single Jummah khutbah. At the end of the Jummah khutbah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we always hear and recite, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْمُرُ بِالْعَدْلِ وَالْإِحْسَانِ وَإِيْتَاءِ ذِي الْقُرْبَى وَيَنْهَا عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ وَالْبَغْيِ يَعِذُكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَذَكَرُونَ in essence, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's saying that there are three things that He's ordering us to do, and there are three things that He's ordering us to stay away from. Okay? Three things that we must do. What's the first one? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quickly go through these three because I want to focus on the last three. The first thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions is al adl, justice. Justice with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, justice within our community members. Justice in terms of standing always on the side of haq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhu alladheena amanu, kunu qawwameena bil qisti shuhada alillah, wa law ala anfusikum. I've talked about this before. There are eight categories of people mentioned in this ayah, that when it comes to these eight categories, make sure that when you do justice, you don't do only justice at other times, but when it comes to these eight people, you have to also apply justice. Who are those? The very first one is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala subhanahu mentions ourselves. Meaning that if I know I've done something that is wrong and justice is not on my side, then I need to still own up for that. And there are eight people mentioned that ayah. And we also find that in for any society to flourish, in order for any society to move forward and make pure developments, justice is required. This is why Rasulullah one of the very first things he was able to establish was justice. He was always there for justice, even in fact before he became a prophet, he stood for justice in the, in the story of Hilf al-Fudul. A man came from, uh, from Yemen, he sold something to a person from Mecca, he never got his money back, and so he went to the Kaaba, he began to call out the people of Mecca, and at that time Rasulullah wasallam, even before he became a prophet, he was part of a pact. And that pact said that anyone who comes to Mecca, they will not be done, they will not be treated unjustly. So we see that even before Islam, even before the Prophet ﷺ became a prophet, he stood up for justice. Then the second thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, wal ihsan. Ihsan in every single thing. In fact, even when it comes to separation and divorces, we see how ugly it becomes in our society. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, even if you have to do something like that, then you have to apply ihsan. فَإِمْسَاكُمْ بِمَعْرُوفٍ أَوْ تَسْرِيحٌ بِإِحْسَانٍ Do not go after each other. Do not try to skin each other alive. And do not try to take everything they, they have just because you want to come out on top. فَإِمْسَاكُمْ بِمَعْرُوفٍ أَوْ تَسْرِيحٌ بِإِحْسَانٍ If Allah is telling us to apply ihsan in something like a divorce, what do you think about the rest of the a'mal, the rest of the, our, our affairs? Of course, we should always apply ihsan. And the third thing that Allah mentions uh, to us, to, for us to do is qurba and give to those who are closest to us. Give what? Take care of them. Give them money. Give them aid. Help them out. Support them any any which way you can. So these are three things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, and we've heard many khutbas about that. But the next thing that I want to mention is what are the three things that Allah tells us to stay away from? He says, What is fahsha? Some have translated fahsha as immorality. In Urdu, you can call it behayay. Some people have translated it as shamelessness. I even saw one translation, one explanation of fahsha. Someone, someone said that something that is not considered as acceptable, something that is considered as unacceptable in society. But subhanAllah, I don't think that that translation is valid or that explanation is valid because we are living in times where fahisha everywhere is becoming common. And since it is becoming common, it is becoming normal. So that explanation is not correct. Here's the right explanation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created you and I with something called the fitrah. And the fitrah is something that is considered as pure. Meaning that a person who has a pure fitrah, a person who has noble character, good character, good demeanor, if they hear something or they hear someone say something, or they see someone dressed in a certain way, or they see a certain action being done right in front of them, they feel uncomfortable inside, that is considered as haya. That is what they're doing wrong is considered as fahsha. 
And so in our society, if a person has a good character, a good demeanor, and that means that they don't use lewdness in their speech, they're not vulgar in their speech, but whenever they speak, they say something that is righteous. They always use positive demeanor. They don't use their tongue to slander against others. They don't use their tongue to use vulgarity against others. Then this is a person that when they hear the fahisha, it makes them uncomfortable. When someone cusses in front of them, when someone uses filthy language in front of them, they get uncomfortable inside. They can't sit there. When they see someone doing something that is considered as fahisha, they become uncomfortable. When they see a person dressed in a certain way, they look at that and they look down. Right away, that's a sign that they are uncomfortable. So that is considered as fahisha. Anything that is considered as shamelessness is considered as fahisha. And when it comes to fahisha, first of all, we learn from Rasulullah wasallam that he was not a person who committed fahisha, who did not even get close to fahisha. In fact, Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, he says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that a true believer is who? أَلَيْسَ لِلْمُؤْمِنِ بِالطَّعَانِ وَلَا اللَّعَانِ وَلَا الْفَاحِشِ وَلَا الْبَذِيرِ Rasulullah is telling us that a true believer is a person who does not taunt others. A true believer is a person who does not curse at others. A true believer is a person who does not commit indecency, who does not commit fahisha. And a true believer is a person who does not abuse others. This is what the Prophet ﷺ is telling us. And once again, it's not about only the people in public, it's about also the people at home. If we're using indecency at home, if we're using fahisha at home, if I'm using, if I'm using my tongue in the wrong way at home, then if I'm taunting other people at home, then the Prophet is telling us that this person is not a true believer. And not only that, but once a man came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Aisha, our mother is sitting with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And what, when this man comes, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam knows that this person who's coming to see him is not a good person. And that's why Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that what an evil son he is to his tribe. What an evil brother he is to his tribe. Meaning that this person who's coming, he's not a great person. He's not a person who has a positive influence on others. But when he came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sat down with him and he talked to him very respectfully. Aisha radiallahu anha, she says to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Ya Rasulullah, I've never seen something like this. You know that he's not a good person, but yet you sat down with him and you talked to him and you showed him respect. Why? If he's not a good person. What did the Prophet ﷺ, he said? He says, Oh Aisha, have you ever seen me speaking in a bad or in a negative or in a dirty manner? Do you, have you ever seen me using filthy language? And then he says, the Prophet ﷺ says, the worst people, the worst people in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment are those whom the people leave undisturbed to be away from their evil deeds. Meaning that you are so toxic, you commit so much fahisha that if other people feel uncomfortable and they leave away from you, the Prophet is saying that these are the worst people in the sight of Allah on the day of judgment. Once again, this is not a point for us to point fingers at others. This is a point for us to point fingers at ourselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ إِنَّمَا حَرَّمَ رَبِّيَ الْفَوَاحِشِ The first thing that Allah mentions in this ayah is that Allah has made haram what? Al-fawahish. And what kind of fawahish? Ma ظَهَرَ minha wa ma batan. Any kind of fahisha that you commit in, in the front of the public, any kind of fahisha that you commit behind, behind closed doors, in secrecy, how many things do we see online that is considered as fahisha? Pornography is something that is so common within the ummah today. In fact, it is so sad to say this, that if you, if you study the top 10 countries who view the most amount of pornography, six or seven of them are our Muslim countries. Six or seven of them are our Muslim countries. Allah is telling us, Fahisha in front of the public is haram, but Fahisha behind the scenes, behind closed doors, is also considered as haram. And we also find the hadith or in the story of our mother Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. When she was slandered, the very story, the very well known story of ifk, is mentioned that, of course, after, the, after very, a very long time, after you know, a few weeks, several weeks, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He sent down some ayat to exonerate our mother Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. 
And after, at the end of that passage, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, those people who love to spread fahisha. What does spreading fahisha mean? When there is, and right before this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, He says, There are hypocrites who are saying things about our mother, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, and they have no knowledge of. How often does it happen that today in our societies, people are launching claims, accusations. They hear one side of the story and they've already made up their mind. Our deen has taught us there are two sides of every single story. And if a person does not know the entire story and they've made a judgment that you have committed a great crime. So these people who go in society and they speak about this, and they launch slanders against other people and not only just using their tongue. Many people get online nowadays. They are keyboard warriors, I call them. They like to get on the internet and just you know, express all their frustration on the internet, launch all the accusation as they wish without even going through the Islamic proper standard of declaring who's innocent and who's guilty. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayah, this is an ayah in reference to them also. The fahisha, whenever they say a slander, Allah is referring to it as a fahisha. Inna al-ladheena yuhibbuna an tashi'a al-fahisha fi al-ladheena amanu lahum adhabun fi dunya wal akhirah Then for them there is a severe punishment. So that is why fahisha is something that we must stay away from. The second thing quickly I will mention is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to stay away from it is considered, is called al-munkar. What is munkar? Munkar is considered any kind of sin. Any kind of sin. And sins that, by the way, sins that lead to other sins. Small sins open the door to bigger sins. One sin will open the door to another sin. That's why we stay away from sins. What happens when you and I, we commit sins? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deprives us from knowledge. Allah will deprive us from risk. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will create difficulties in our life. We will become distant from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our heart overall will become hard. That no ayah of the Quran, no hadith of the Prophet can penetrate that heart. So this is why something that we have to think about. And the last thing the Prophet, uh, the last thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wal baghi. Baghi means oppression. It could be oppression towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we commit haram. It could be oppression against ourselves. Like Allah says in the Quran, Inna Allah la yadlimun nasa shay'a walakinna nasa anfusam yadlimun. When we do something that is wrong, we're not hurting Allah, we're hurting ourselves. We're doing zulm against ourselves. And then finally, we can do zulm either, some people they do zulm against other people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that wal baghi mean that we have to stay away from these things. So the three things we stay away from is Fahisha. Number two is what's number two? Wal munkar sins in general. Wal baghi oppression, oppressing anyone else. And why did Allah subhanahu wa taala mention three, these three sins? Because these three sins are contagious. These three sins will not only impact you; they impact us an entire society. We see outside how much fahisha does exist nowadays.